What's going on everyone? My name is Kyle here with Black and White. I'm uh, just going to create a quick video for you for as you travel for the holidays. So we all travel, we're all professionals, we do this for a living for the most part, but oftentimes we get in these weird places where we don't have access to the kind of coffee that we want to consume. So of course you can totally buy instant off the shelf from us or any of the other amazing instant providers in the country, take that with you. But that really limits your shareability of this thing that we do, the thing that we enjoy, right? And so the best coffee is a coffee that's shared with someone you love. So I really wanted to break this down so we don't have to travel with our Chemex or French press or any of that stuff. Just make it as simple and as low tech and as easy as possible, right? So. You may be crazy lucky and have a family member who has a Technovorum or one of the Breville machines or a Bonavita machine at their house and a grinder and the whole setup, but likely you don't. So I don't either. So it, in, the, in years past, I would travel with a grinder and with my Bonavita and all this stuff uh, back when I worked for a grinder manufacturer, but now I work for a coffee roaster. So I really want to share coffee with my loved ones. So I've come up with a thing, which is basically an adaptation of my dad's uh, home brew recipe, like home brewer recipe, uh, to share with you today so that we can have great coffee with our friends and family as we travel. And you can share those amazing cups with everyone. I actually did a trial run of this during Thanksgiving break this year, where I took pre-ground coffee only uh, to the house that we sit at for Thanksgiving and had an amazing time sharing coffee and loving almost every minute of it with my family. So. This is kind of where it gets a little bit tricky, right? So all you really have is ground coffee, which I would say take coffee to the cafe, have them grind it on their EK or on their Guatemala or one of their nice grinders, rather than like worrying about grinding it on your home grinder. Um, if you can, typically most cafes will let you, will grind coffee for you right before you leave. And just tell them that you want it a little bit finer than you typically get it for drip coffee. They'll know exactly what you mean. If they don't, I'm really sorry. Uh, maybe find somewhere else to buy coffee. I don't know, whatever. Uh, if it's one of our cafes, I'm very sorry. Uh, but anyways, um, so what I have here is a bag of our uh, blend, the classic, which is coffees from Colombia and Honduras right now. Super delicious. But uh, what I've noticed is that coffee pots like this, their biggest problem is they don't make water quite hot enough. So don't take coffees that are crazy acidic or vibrant, or maybe have a bunch of fermentation on them. Take something that's a little bit more straightforward. Classic, maybe one of the espresso blends from the cafe that's near your house, whatever, uh, or like a batch brew blend that they typically have on, on trip that you see. Uh, and, um, and this is gonna serve you a lot better than trying to showcase some like beautiful wash Ethiopian coffee or Kenyan coffee or some crazy anaerobic um, this is going to be more of a gateway drug than, say, a uh, an aha moment, probably, for your family members, which is cool. They hopefully just think that you're not a weirdo, which is what most of our families think about us because we work in coffee uh, as adults, which is whatever. Anyways, so you've got this $10 coffee maker. Um, so where, where do you start? Where do you start with this machine, right? The first place you should start is cleaning this bad joker, right? Um, so like many people, our families may not clean their coffee makers as regularly as we might like. Even me, I did this earlier and I didn't clean it up, right? So you have kind of some wet coffee, maybe have even already dried coffee, it may have been in there for a really long time. So definitely go after this with a, like a bristle brush. If you, if you are thinking really far ahead, bring some Kafiza with you, shout out to Ernex. Uh, if not, vinegar can work, but be careful that you really, really rinse that out because you don't want vinegar flavor in your coffee, at least I don't. Um, but yeah, these coffee makers are not horrible. And when done right, when the coffee ratio is right, you can have some really lovely brews. Actually, what I'm drinking here is uh, the classic that I brewed on this machine a bit earlier in my Ember mug. So we've gone over what we need to do to clean the brewer. If you have this, they already know what's going on. If they have this, you may have to have a little bit more work. Uh, clean this, and then the next big thing is you've got your ground coffee, you've got your brewer, you need some kind of measuring device. So if you have time to think ahead, go ahead and calibrate yourself to a spoon at your house. But if you don't, you're just kind of just on the rip, on the cuffs, all good, all good. So we've got three different size spoons here, which represent three very different amounts of coffee. So that's a problem. 
So what we can do is if we have a, if we have small spoons, we're gonna need more. If we have like a medium size, like this is just a standard tablespoon, normal style. Uh, and then this is like a cupping spoon. So what, what we get here for grams per scoop in a huma, I mean like heaping, like can barely hold it all on the spoon. Here you're getting about seven grams. Here you're getting between eight and nine grams. And here you're getting between uh, nine and a half and uh, 11 grams, depending on coffee density and grind size. So basically the idea is that Mr. Coffee kind of style machines like this one uh, utilize this concept of the standard American coffee cup. So like a five, this is a five cup brewer, which is five, five ounce servings. So you're gonna need about nine to 10 grams of coffee for every cup that you see on the side here. Just, I'm trying to make it as simple as humanly possible. So if you have one of these big spoons, you basically only need one heaping scoop per cup that you see here. Straightforward, right? If you have like a meat, like a, a, a one that's a little smaller, you think it's not quite enough, you're gonna need basically um, five and a half of these for this five cup brew. The same thing holds true with like a 12 cup brew. You need 12 and then probably one to grow on. But as that gets bigger, remember that you're gonna need to add more to it to kind of make up that time because you're adding kind of exponentially grows, right? And then if you're gonna have one of a really tiny spoon, I would say avoid the tiny spoon. It's gonna make your life very difficult. Uh, but if you have enough uh, thought to think ahead, just take a nice, good size tablespoon with you and you should be good to go. Um, let me give you an example of what a heaping tablespoon looks like. On my shirt as a background, it's gonna be tough. So, kind of prop your bag open and then you gotta really, really go for it, right? I mean, like see, I just spilled it all over this table. Keep that in mind. If you uh, lose track of it in your eyesight, you will spill some everywhere. But this is gonna be about uh, eight and a half, nine and a half grams. So if you can get a, if you can get five of those in a coffee pot, it's gonna taste good. And then make, uh, make them calibrations on day two and day three. Like if you need a little bit more strength or if it's a little too strong, you know, make your adjustments that way, right? So yeah, go home, brew some amazing coffee, share some amazing time with your friends and family. And most of all, continue to enjoy great coffee. See ya.